Dr. Jorge Chavarro, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, Jorge, it's, um, it's exciting for me to be able to talk to somebody from the Nurses Health Study because this has been one of those things that I heard about in nursing school. I was excited that nurses were so, so much a, a strong part of such a groundbreaking, uh, ongoing research um, opportunity. And now we know that with Nurses Health Study 3, which started I think back in 2010, um, there are now ongoing opportunities for new people to become involved with this study, nurses that are currently um, coming into the workforce and nursing students. So um, why don't you introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about your background, and then we can go in and talk about the history of the study. Okay, thank you Jamie for having me in your program. So. Uh, I'm uh, an epidemiologist. I'm an assistant professor of nutrition and epidemiology at uh, Harvard School of Public Health and of medicine at Harvard Medical School. And I've been involved uh, with the Nurses Health Study for almost 10 years now since I came to Harvard initially as a, as a doctoral student and now moving on through, through uh, and a junior faculty member. And I wanted to mention that not only uh, nurses have been a very important part uh, of uh, these uh, research, ongoing research project, as you mentioned, they are probably the key component of making it uh, such a successful venture. So the initial nurses' health study, uh, which uh, which was the one uh, initially called nurses' health study, and now we know as nurses' health study one, uh, started actually before I was born in 1976, um, and. Uh, some of the initial pilots actually did not include nurses. Some of the, the initial pilot for establishing a very large cohort targeted uh, wives of physicians because they thought that maybe that would be a great population that might be informed about health issues and that might have a good response rate. But it was quickly discarded after uh, the my predecessors, so some of the senior people in, in our group realized that it was the physicians and not the wives of the physicians who were answering the questionnaires. And, um, but what they quickly realized is that, is that nurses pro, uh, were a very, very uh, potentially a key group for being uh, wonderful research participants, not only because they were highly educated in health issues and were therefore uh, um, able to provide accurate responses to health questionnaires that were uh, worded in a more technical language. Uh, but also, uh, nurses have this fantastic capacity to uh, be absolutely obsessive about things that they do. So uh, over the years, seen, uh, from the original nurses' health study in 1976, then the nurses' health studies two starting in 1989, and now with nurses three, we have been able to do things that would be completely impossible uh, in in uh, when if, if you targeted the general population, such as having tens of thousands of women from all over the country collect their own blood and collect their own uh, biological specimens and ship them to us by mail, uh, which has made uh, made it possible to, to make groundbreaking uh, findings in relation to cancer and other major uh, like chronic diseases. That's so exciting, and you know, with over 200,000 nurses participating in these studies over the years, uh, it's exciting now that you're opening the study back up again. Uh, uh, what are the goals of a Nurses Health Study 3, and mm -hmm. what are you hoping to accomplish uh, as far as numbers of bringing new uh, participants into the study? Okay, yeah, so Nurses Health Study, uh, when it was first started, it was, uh, it, it was thought as a breast cancer study. So back in 1976, the big issue was, do oral contraceptives cause breast cancer, yes or no? And there was not a, a clear answer to that. And the nurses health study was originally established to answer that question. Fast forward to 1989, and it was also about breast cancer too. So the developing uh, question by that moment was, does diet have anything to do with breast cancer? And then the second uh, cohort of nurses health study was initiated with that question in mind. Uh, since then, it has become increasingly clear that for breast cancer, uh, the critical period of exposure may happen between adolescence and uh, first, and when a woman has her first full-time pregnancy. So, pretty much every single study 
that has uh, looked at risk factors for breast cancer may have missed the most critical window of exposure for breast cancer. So one of the goals that we want to accomplish with this new study is to get a better understanding and better timing of exposure assessment to eventually be able to answer the question about what may be the major risk factors for breast cancer, uh, taking, into, taking uh, also into consideration that there have been major shifts in 1976 in, uh, in known risk factors for breast cancer, such as uh, reproductive history, so women are having fewer children, they're having children later, and that may, uh, that may uh, factor in on, on, on future breast cancer risk. Uh, uh, there, there's a wider use of hormonal contraception and newer preparations of hormonal contraception, and that may also bear differently in breast cancer risk. But it's not only about breast cancer. So nurse cell study and nurse cell study two uh, has been about chronic disease and about health in general. So we've also tried to incorporate insights into what we have learned from the previous studies into developing this new study. So one of the areas that I'm very interested in and that I'm most active in is in uh, understanding fertility and pregnancy health. So with nurse cell study two, we collected a lot of information about pregnancies and about fertility because they were known, they were considered as potential risk factors for breast cancer living life. But the amount of detail that we collected was never enough to uh, take a very, very deep look at uh, fertility as, one, as its outcome, as its own uh, disease and point of interest and to pregnancy health as, as in as much detail as we would have wanted it to. So with this new study, we have incorporated some very, very intense sub-studies that allow us to identify women who are trying to get pregnant. And it, as we have learned over the last couple of years, uh, nurses do plan their pregnancies and they plan their pregnancies very much, which allows us for, makes it an ideal study population to identify people who want to become pregnant before they start trying to get pregnant and then follow them through their attempts of becoming pregnant and the, and the health of their pregnancy thereafter. And another thing that we have also gained a lot of experience over the years is in understanding how geographically based uh, exposure, so where you live, where you work, the routes that you use to commute may affect your health. And we have also ramped up the amount of data collection that we do in this area to allow us to um, get a better understanding about how your surroundings may affect your health long term. It, it's, it's amazing to me and one of the things that I find so interesting as a journalist and a nurse uh, about the uh, nurse's health study over the years is that while it was focused in, in is still primarily focused on causes of breast cancer and trying to root that out, that because of the level of detail in the data that is collected, you've been able to, to find links to so many other health problems uh, related to uh, unknown risk factors, previously unknown risk factors. And, and that's, that's really exciting because it's, it's, it's almost like uh, the surprise in the cake, if you will. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the nurses, data from nurses' health study has been key in identifying some things that we, have, that we take for granted right now. So, for example, back in 1976, when nurses' health study uh, started, uh, smoking was pretty much a thing that people did in the workplace. And uh, nurses' health study was one of the main studies that helped establish that uh, smoking was an important risk factor not only for lung cancer, which was uh, pretty much known by that time, but that it was also an important risk factor for cardiovascular disease and it was a risk factor for other cancers. Uh, probably one of the most influential findings in recent history has to do with the now infamous trans fats, uh, which um, uh, our study, which Nurses' Cell Study and Nurses' Cell Study 2 were one of the first studies that identified a link between consumption of trans fats and in increased risk of coronary heart disease, which eventually led to regulation in the United States that has decreased dramatically the amount of trans fats used in our food supply. And in some countries, it actually led to the complete elimination of trans fats from this food supply, such as has been the case of Denmark. Um, and as you said, there, the amount of information, amount of detail that is collected in, in nurses' health study has allowed us to, uh, to investigate uh, areas that were uh, not foreseen at the time. So 
not only have we made major strides on investigating the potential risk factors for breast cancer, but it has also allowed us to uh, understand uh, how diet and lifestyle may play a role in the prevention of coronary heart disease. Uh, it, it more recently, it has allowed us to uh, identify risk factors for neuro, uh, uh, neurodegenerative conditions and cognitive decline. And with the Younger Women Nurses Health Study 2, it has allowed us to investigate some aspects of pregnancy health, particularly uh, determinants of gestational diabetes. And one of the big projects that I'm currently involved right now is, is understanding how women who, who've had a history of gestational diabetes, uh, uh, what are the, the factors that determine whether or not they will eventually de uh, develop type 2 diabetes. Um, and diabetes on itself has been a major, major area on uh, of of the studies overall, and as uh, and the fact that uh, uh, this group of uh, roughly 220,000 women continue to participate and be actively engaged in the study just makes it easier and makes it possible for us to continue making use of this wonderful and unique resource. So let's talk a little bit about um, what you're doing now with as far as opening up the study to new participants. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your goals there and, and who is it open to? Okay, so the Nurses Health Study 3, as I mentioned earlier, uh, has was um, started, we started active recruitment back in 2010 uh, with the scientific goals of trying to address some of the still lingering questions on breast cancer and some other conditions. And it's, uh, in a way, it's rooted on what we have learned from conducting studies from Nurses Health Study 1 and 2, but it also represents a very clear departure of what we have done before. So uh, first, it's, um, uh, it's completely internet-based. Uh, so, and rather than relying on, on calendar time-based schedules, which is what we had done before, so there was a 19, 89 questionnaire, 91, 93, 95, so forth. Uh, once you enroll in the study, you enter into a personalized time schedule that adapts to your life as opposed to you adapting to your study. So you receive questionnaires on a fairly consistent frequency uh, that allow you, that allows us to identify critical life stages such as pregnancies and allows us to tailor the specific study schedule to uh, to anyone uh, to any one participant, while at the same time uh, collecting the same amount of detail and information that we were collecting before. Uh, right now, uh, the study is open to any nurse uh, or nursing student living in the United States or Canada who was born on or after June first, nineteen sixty-five. Uh, and um, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Um, so. Right now, the study is open to any nurse or nursing student living in the United States or Canada who was born on or after January 1st, 1965. And uh, up until last December, we had been uh, focused on recruiting uh, female nurses only. So we have so far uh, recruited approximately 38,000 nurses. In last year, we spent a lot of time and effort uh, trying to uh, adapting all our existing questionnaires uh, to allow male nurses to join the study. And starting last January, we opened recruitment of uh, uh, into the study to male nurses. So males who had been excluded from the previous versions of the study are now able to be full part of the nurses' health study, just as they are a full part of the nursing profession in general. Our goal is to recruit 100,000 participants uh, and including as many men as we can. So men are still a minority within the nursing profession, but as their numbers have grown over the years, we hope that we can enroll at least 10,000 male nurses uh, over the course of the next couple of years. Well, first of all, kudos to including the men out there in the nursing profession. I think we all appreciate that. And we want to be part of this groundbreaking research as well. Um, but also just it's exciting that, that this is continuing on and then it's continuing to grow. And uh, who knows where it will lead? I, I, I'm curious, um, has any research been released recently that you'd like to talk about? Uh, maybe anything that's come out um, from Nurses Health uh, Study 3 that might be of interest to our audience? 
Actually, yes. So we recently had our first paper coming from the data that has been collecting the new study published. And um, one of the areas that we have decided to emphasize in an effort to giving back to the nursing profession that has given us so much is getting very, very detailed information on occupational exposures to nurses, of, of nurses, to uh, give a very, very uh, uh, concerted effort to know whether the uh, nursing occupation in and of itself may represent uh, a health, a specific health hazards in the future. So um, our first publication focuses on work schedules and physical demands of, of nursing work, such as heavy lifting, uh, durations of standing and things like that in relation to menstrual cycle characteristics among the women who were recruited during the first 18 months of the study or so. And what we found, which was quite interesting, uh, was that uh, women who were, lift, who were doing heavy lifting more frequently, and by heavy lifting, we, should, we define heavy lifting as lifting a load of more than 15 kilograms repeatedly. So lifting heavy loads uh, a higher frequency of, of, of uh, lifting heavy loads was associated with a greater frequency of menstrual cycle irregularities. So we don't know what that means in terms of fertility or in terms of uh, uh, hormonally related uh, outcomes at this moment, but as the study grows, that will allow us to investigate what that means in general. And one and one and some of the ongoing analysis within the cohort are how these specific occupational exposures may relate to fertility among among the female nurses who have been the ones that are already enrolled. And uh, another area that um, that we presented as an abstract last year um, at a reproductive medicine uh, meeting um, found that occupational exposure to pesticide, uh, I'm sorry, occupational exposure to disinfectants um, so, which are very, very highly prevalent in many specialties of the nursing profession, um, was as also associated to uh, menstrual cycle irregularities and to decreased fertility. So, we, we again, we've continued working on that to see, uh, to refine our findings and eventually have them published in a peer review journal. Amazing. Well, uh, Jorge, I think you and I could probably sit here and talk about the research from this study and, and these three studies actually over, for a long time, but um, we are, we're limited by time. I would invite you at any time to, to come back on the show. Uh, just shoot me an email so that we can have you back to talk about any further research releases or other information you might want to share with the nursing show community. We, we support research as nurses and it's exciting that some of us are going to be able to participate in this study moving forward. Thank you. And I just have a final reminder for any nurse listening to this program who may be interested in joining, just visit our website, which is www.nhs3.org. Uh, nurseshealthstudy3.org and, uh, and join the study. It's very, very easy. It takes only a, a, a few minutes to join and your total commitment uh, probably adds up to about an hour per year and giving uh, an hour per of, of your time per year uh, will advance uh, um, women's and men's health for many, many decades to come if, our, if what your colleagues have done in the future is any indication of what this new cohort will do for the future of the American Samoa. I absolutely agree. And that's nh3.org. NHS3. NHS3.org. That's right. Perfect. I'll have a link in the show notes for that. And we'll make sure I send that out via my email and, uh, and, of course, my social media links as well. We want everybody out there that's checking this out that's a nurse in the U.S. or Canada to get over there and sign up and become a participant so that we can be part of this groundbreaking research moving forward. Um, Jorge, thank you very much for coming on the show. And, uh, again, I extend that invitation to come back anytime you want. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good day.